Okay, so welcome to the May uh, Wave 5 Trade monthly support webinar. Uh, I've done it early this month because I'm going to do, um, Chicago, traveling over, over the pond to Chicago to do some training. The Wave 5 Trade training on the Friday the 18th in Chicago for the whole day. I know quite a few people are coming to that. I don't know um, if anybody else is interested, let me know. Uh, and then I'm with my inner circle on the Saturday and Sunday as well, doing some training. So get this done out of the way, uh, the beginning of the month, and obviously to look at the, um, the new version three. So first of all, just quickly remind everybody, I will be in Chicago. I'm sat there right now. I don't look that fresh today. Uh, I'm going to, and I've been producing the lessons for this, um, for the new strategy for futures and bonds on smaller time frames using the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. We're going to be using multiple time frames to capture those ultra high probability fifth wave moves. And I've got some really great examples there as well. Some blend investing, getting down and dirty with the new Elliott Wave Indicator Suite version three, doing some stochastic training some live trading, that sort of thing. So really, really good full day training with me. Classroom environment, not a massive event, only a maximum of 20 people there. We're half full already, so it's looking good. Uh, so if anybody's interested, I will put the link in the chat box so you can book. So that's that out of the way. Just want to go through the membership stocks um, membership for Wave 5 Trade. I've added now stochastic trades to go with uh, the new version 3 um, tool that's available, the stochastic tool. So now this is a work in progress, okay? So I've got it, the data, uh, like the fifth wave trade, is okay, but you still need to do some work and hence the courses and things like that we're going to be doing. But in essence, what we're looking for at the moment, we've got stock, we've got the normal long fifth wave trades on the weekly, the daily, and the 60 minute time frames every day, both long and short. Now, what I've done for long and short stochastic trades is just intraday at the moment. So on the spreadsheet, when we click on there each day, the spreadsheet will have 15, 30 minute, and 60 minute time frame potential shorts. So these are the ones that are setting up or getting close to that stochastic crossover um, towards the end of each session. So at the beginning of that session, uh, you've got those stochastic. So those were in there today on the 15, 30. There was no 60 minutes on the on the um, long tape trades today. Um, but there, that's how it will be for now. I'm going to work on that. Again, we've been using the Wave 5 trade st uh, stock membership for quite some time now for the fifth wave moves. Uh, and now I want to introduce these scan results every day for stock potential stochastic trades so you can use them with the new uh, version three. It's coming tomorrow, Trevor. It was supposed to be today, uh, but I've had some, well, I've had a thunderstorm and a power cut for a start <laughs> and, a, and a few other technical issues today, uh, but I'll, I'll prepare in the morning when I get up. The first thing I'll do is prepare the emails to the people that purchased and those emails will go out with the code and everything like that so i do apologize uh force majeure today as it were so stock scanner membership we have the long fifth wave trades uh short fifth wave trades stochastic long trades short trades um, now, so we're building it, we're building community, we've got a Facebook group. The idea is we want to build the membership, it's only $97 a year, um, but also with the membership, we're going to be, you're going to be able to ask me questions. So the idea is I want to build this membership um, and community around the Wave 5 trade. Uh, and then in the Facebook group, if you've got a question for me, not an urgent question, what I'll do at the end of every week is put all those questions together and make a video and answer your questions. Okay, so yeah, the Ninja Trader version, TOS, all the versions are ready now for version three and they're all going out tomorrow. So that's for those ex existing customers, you will get the new version three code files tomorrow via email. If you don't get them by the end of tomorrow, email me at 
fallaway5trade.com. Now give it until tomorrow night. Wait till, you know, then email me Wednesday if you don't get it. Because sometimes your spam folders will, will take it. But I've got you all, you're all on the list for depending on which uh, indicator suite you've purchased. Uh, and you will get that there. So again, just back to this, I want to build a community, community here. I want you to be, able to be able to ask me questions. So not just wait for the monthly webinar. I want to do weekly videos. So you can ask questions in, in the Facebook group. Uh, and I'll collect them at the end of the week and make a quick video to answer the questions, okay? Uh, so that's the idea of the Facebook community there as well. I uh, just want to go on. I will do, Trevor, yeah. So just quickly, before we move on, I just wanted to look at AVGO. This is something I did. I did. This was one of the stock signals, guys. Okay. Did the video uh, not yesterday, the day before. I only choose one of the signals each day just to choose. Uh, I'm in this trade. Um, I think you're in it, Jerry. Mark as well. I know you're in it because you're in my inner circle. Um, I don't know who, who else may be in it. So. Basically, we're in it. We're in good profit already. It's looking good. Basic wave, wave four pullback on the short. We got a great crowning on the 535. We pulled back against these false bars. So this is where I want to introduce this new stochastic indicator here. So these false breakout dots denote a very strong bearish trend in this case, oversold zone. So the stochastic keeps uh, breaking out falsely. Hang on a minute. Which screen are you seeing? I've pulled the um, AVGO over there. Let me just move that out of the way a minute. Okay, do apologize, guys. Uh, it looks like it was clinging to the um, the weather, Trevor. <laughs> the weather. Okay, brilliant. Uh, I'm going to have to go through all that again now. That's really bad. So um, this was a signal from the Stock Signals membership. I did the video a few days ago. Uh, isolated the wave count. Up here at the highs, had the one, the two, the three, the four, and the four pulled back into the amber zone. Really simple setup. This uh, I only choose one a day from the stocks membership. I can't do a video on hundreds. Uh, the 535 pulled back between 90 and 140, and the stochastic pulled back against these false dots in version three, and that will be coming out tomorrow. So these false dots represent false breakouts of the stochastic so a strong bearish trend and the idea with this when we're talking about a fifth wave move not the stochastic strategy the idea with this when the stochastic pulls back against those yellow dots right can anybody everybody else hear me Yeah. Okay. If you can't hear me, you, you need to have selected um, audio from from your computer. Okay. So BG, you need to go back, check out your sound on your computer. You should have chosen audio <coughs> computer.
<laughs> oh yeah, sorry, Mark. <laughs> it's been one of those days, I tell you. So when it pulls back against that strong bearish trend, this now gives you that extra confidence that it's like an elastic band. It wants to return to that overall bearish trend. So if you've not got a false break, false breakout at the bottom there and everything else sets up, it might be slightly weaker. But the idea is you want to get all the stars aligned. So the wave four pull back into a good zone. You've got the 535 oscillator between 140 and 90%. And now you've got this false breakout stochastic. It's pulling back against it and crossing over in the overbought zone. So more stars are aligning. It's a higher probability trade. And then we've just got to go for the, the, the standard um, entry strategy below the 6.4 moving average there. And this is where we are now. We hit the 1% profit earlier on today, but uh, we're, we're, we're making our way down. I don't know if anybody watched that video and got into that one or if anybody in the stocks uh, scanner membership got into it. You're in it, Tao. Good. Give me a number nine for who's in it. You're in it with a put spread, Jerry. Number nine. We should go for five, really. Fifth wave, shouldn't we? Okay, so that's just an example where we want to build the picture using this Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. So it's come from a signals in the signals membership. We've isolated the wave count at the high. We've got the wave count, pulled back into the amber zone. <laughs> uh, we've got the 535, we've got the, the, um, the stochastic crossing over against the false bar. So really strong high probability trade there. Um, we did WRD quite a long time ago, but I just want this one hit the roof, really did hit the roof. Now, um, I don't know, even know if it'll do the wave count anymore because we've gone beyond, way beyond where we entered. Yeah, it's turned into a new wave three now, so we might not get it. No. So this was the move before here, this move. Um, but now it's gone longer than the fifth wave, gone beyond the target. So it's now a third wave. A WRD was another video um, that I did from the Stock Signals membership, which I'm going to show you again now because you can, you see it's hanging on to this screen, which is really, really strange. So um, let me just... This is what I mean. I'm having one of those technical days that is just really frustrating me at the moment so we'll go for that in a little while um, right so somebody wanted to look at the futures norm you've put your hand up um, let me just check the questions okay let me bring the futures over and I'll have to reshare the screen again Being a bit weird. Okay, so this is the futures setup that I have that I trade mainly with the trade room or the inner circle. I'm just going to choose one of these now and choose YM. Uh, what did we trade last night? Um, yeah, I'm going to show you that now. Um, was it ES, wasn't it? So the arrows are for the stochastic strategy. Okay, so the idea of the arrows is right now on ES, we've come down, we've hit the fifth wave low, we've bounced off that low, freaky, I know, but it happens all the time. You get the green arrow uh, on the price, 
chart as well as here on TOS. Everything else is just on the chart. So now we've got a potential stochastic trade to go long outside the 6.4 moving average, but obviously above this high. So this is what the green arrows are for. And those for the new, these are for the stochastic strategy that's going to be, that's added to it. So just as well as the false bars, what I've done is developed a small stochastic strategy to aid those traders, especially intraday day trading, um, when something's not trending, because only the fifth wave moves when it's not trending, when it's trending. Okay, when something's not trending, you need other opportunities. So we use some of the same fib levels, indicators and things like that. But all I've done is made it really simple uh, to do that. Um, when we are looking for uh, potential stochastic moves, uh, but they will only come when we have a true roller coaster. Uh, what I mean from that is when we're going from oversold to overbought. Okay. So let's, for example, take ES today. So we came from the false bar here, the, 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 the lows here, the false breakout gives us strong bearish momentum. It pulls back against there, okay? We get the first red arrow here, right? It fails because to be honest, the entry won't be until we go low. And again, this will be part of an online course that I'll be doing after Chicago on entry strategies. So let's just have a quick, a closer look at this. Very, very simple. We've got a red arrow. We don't go low until we be beat this overnight low here. It didn't work. It didn't trigger. It pulls back up again. We get another red arrow. We need to be thinking now this is pulled back, but we need to be going through the 6-4 moving average low. It fails again. We get a third red arrow. Now it's moving. Now it's coming through the 6-4 moving average low. And the entry would have been below this support level here. And as you can see, it just kept coming down and down and down all day. Even as a counter trend trade, uh, Tao, absolutely. Uh, remember, not everything trends every day, especially futures on a day on a five minute time frame. OK, um, so what you've got to do if something's not trending is look for trading opportunities. And that's where the stochastic strategy comes in. So there's two uses for this new stochastic. We've got the false breakouts to aid us uh, when it's pulling back against there on the way forward, which was just discussed and we'll go over again. Plus also this stochastic trading strategy okay now that can work on a daily a 60 minute a five minute it doesn't matter uh, it really really doesn't matter when you do it i'm just trying to find yesterday's trade jerry uh, i'm not gonna have to isolate again aren't i uh, up here for where is it 2560 2560 i think it was Five six zero. Oh. oh no no no! Cancel. Got the wrong one there. Two five six zero. Oh. There's no target with the stochastics, okay? It's about managing them with, and again, this is Tao, when you're in Chicago, I've got a whole lesson on this, okay? And we've got some great strategies in there for managing the trades, okay? Um, I can't do that one from yesterday. Right, so let me just pull this off. And again, that's sticking to that. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm going to share 
a new screen. I don't know why it's sticking to it. It never does this. <laughs> uh, so just bear with me. I just want to pull over uh, another Ninja Trader one with. Um, so I've got futures and forex and everything on there because I know notice George wanted me to look at something. So so go back U.S. dollar CHF. US dollar CHF four hour. Let's see what we've got here. <sighs> yeah, you can tell I don't use four hour charts very much on here. I just need to go to Oh, uh, how does he get the sound? Uh, need to log out and log back in and select computer audio. Your computer. Let's go back. Uh, two, 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 three hundred days. Mm -hmm. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. Sorry, um, because it's usually on a shorter time frame. I do this, so these won't really help. Um, Let me get rid of some of these. Let's get it back down to basics. There we go. Okay, so George. Oh, that was a nice bearish move there. Oh, we're on a very strong wave three at the moment, George. Absolutely going in one direction. You see the false dots at the bottom here. Very strong trend. We're just waiting for that pullback. Now, and this is the this is the waiting game you've got to play. Now. Obviously, we've posted the wave three, and this um, pullback zone adjusts. Remember, those indicators are not indicators. They're just standard indicators. So the, um, the stochastics included, the 535, the pullback zones, the target zones and the Elliott wave count is included. What I had there before are just standard pivot points and previous days uh, lows and highs, but they're just for day trading. So all these indicators here, the false breakout stochastic is included in version three, the 535, the pullback zones, the target zones and everything else, Trevor. Yeah. So with this one, George, you've just got to be patient and wait for that pullback to find support in the zone. But you've got to get confirmation from the 535 pulling back between um, 9140. The stochastic's got to pull back and cross over in the over, oversold zone. You see all these false breakouts at the moment. When it does pull back and you get that really good wave for pullback, it finds support in the uh, probability zones. You've got the 535 stacking up, the stochastic stacking up. It's a very strong probability. This looks like a really good Forex pair. 
to trade off the four hour with this Elliott Wave indicator sweep. Very sweet spots here. Look at this. Boom. Short. Boom. Really, really good. To be honest, I've never traded this Forex pair. To be honest, I don't trade Forex anymore anyway. Uh, I make more money trading stocks. Um, but I can see the appeal of this uh, Forex pair. Absolutely. Uh, so there's been some great trades this year. I mean, yes, four hour time frame. You've got to wait and be patient. But this is where the stochastic um, sort of really comes into its own because it helps you get on the third wave or moves on the third wave. So when you've got a third wave like this one here, let's zoom in and see the power of these stochastic signals with the arrows, okay? So we've just come from a wave four, we've hit the wave five, we've had a wave one, we've had a wave two, We've got the false bars on the wave one. The wave two's pulled back, met the rules, fantastic. Now we get the green arrow here, okay? But we don't wanna trade the third wave until it breaks the wave one pivot. Let's put that line in there. This is a very, very simple strategy, okay? Now, that's the time to enter. It wasn't a very fantastic trade. But as soon as you saw signs of weakness with that doji, you're out. It's a four-hour time frame. You don't need to be uh, watching it every second of the day. Then it pulls back. And then we get another green breakout here. Okay. Go outside the six-four moving average high. Makes new highs. Use a six-four moving average low for a trailing stop. Then you can either go short as well coming out there, coming down again stochastic crosses over in the oversold zone you see what i mean by roller coaster green arrows there go long boom red arrows go short into the wave four zone here now we've got a wave four pullback so we're looking to go it's just on and on and on and on and on okay long-term trending stock um, I've changed charts again. Anybody want me to do forex? Anything else on forex before I change charts? Okay. Right, I'm going to go for Netflix. Okay, so I can't play back on this, but what I'm trying to do is show you where how a trend progresses, Trevor. Okay, so you're only when you're using an elite wave indicator or any charting package, you're just watching a trend progress. Now, for me at this stage, forget what's to the right. Okay. I know this because I've just been working on this for a for a lesson. So this is pretty rangy. This is it's it's moving up, okay. But then we get a pullback into the oversold zone. Starts to move away, and then we get earnings, and that's the catalyst for that first big bullish move, okay. So at this moment in time, we've had a bullish move, potentially the start of a trend, okay. Now it's pulled back but it's found a higher support level. That's a wave two, yeah? Now we start to move back above there. It takes its time, but it does eventually get above this wave one, but then goes flat again. So you could say, actually, that's not the trend I'm interested in because we did have that big impulse leg. It did pull back, but then it wasn't on it like a rocket. It went sideways, okay? So when it goes sideways for a while, look for the next point in which 
we get the move and it starts to continually move. So then you can isolate uh, your wave count here, for example. Okay. So now we're getting that move out. Let's just go to the low here. No, that's, that's the low, isn't it? I couldn't see because the green line. So when we get this big move out and a big move, that was another earnings catalyst there. We, we find that the, the recent low during the range bound period, just before the move, and then that's the move out. I mean, to be honest, that's 205 there was the over that pivot point. Trading wave freeze is extremely difficult. That's why it's called wave five trade. Okay. So to trade the fifth wave is the highest probability move. As you can see here, this third wave went sideways. It wouldn't have stopped you out, but it went sideways and pulled back down again. Now this is the move, then it pulls back and then it comes down and then it hits the target level. Now let's go to WRD for as a prime example here. This one I traded as a fifth wave and then turned into a third wave. That's what happens a lot. So by trading that highest probability move, if you get in on a really strong bullish, it could be bearish trend, and it breaks through the wave five target, you, you, it, you, you all of a sudden find yourself in the third wave because remember that fifth wave cannot be longer than the third wave. So as soon as that impulse wave is longer than your original third wave, it reprints and all of a sudden you find yourself in a third wave. And that's what's so powerful about this. People ask me, how do I get into a third wave? And to be honest, most of the time it's by accident. Okay. This was a wave four pullback. This was the fifth wave move, but it went too long. Now it's a third wave. Okay. If we go to um, HD, this is on the weekly. So this is a really long term trending stock. Trevor. Okay. Having a bad week this week after the trigger last week. Not looking good. Just having a pullback. So I'm going to zoom out a long way here. I'm going to find some lows. We oh, don't like that. Okay. So we've got some range bound period here. I don't like that big candle there. This is a long term trending stock. Okay. We're in the fifth wave now. Was there an opportunity to trade the third wave? Absolutely. When you're in a really strong bullish move like this and it pulls back and doesn't even get into the oversold zone and then pulls, you get the green bar and you go beyond this initial pivot point especially on a long term stock weekly or a daily time frame that's a very strong impulse leg okay because it didn't even get in there so we're not talking 5 minute time frames here guys you, it's got to cross over but when you're in a longer term trending stock like this that is really strong like apple cisco hd other ones this the reason why I put this in here, because this is an alternate strategy to get in that third wave. So that was an opportunity to trade that third wave right there. And it went up and would have took you out at the trading stop here. But to be honest, you would have got out before then. But now we've had that wave four pullback. It's found great support. It's, it's pulled back against the false bar, false breakout. It's crossed over. The, the 535 is between 90 and 140 percent, and that's the trade. So that's the weekly time frame on HD. But you've got to expect it could take up to 20 weeks to reach that target on a longer term trade on stocks. Okay. Right. Somebody asked me about Apple to have a look at Apple today. So. 
let me just change that to Apple. No, I don't like the colors on that. Um, that's the weekly. Have I got a daily time frame somewhere yet? So let me duplicate in a new tab, put Apple on there, got earnings today. Oh, sorry. The P didn't work <laughs> on my. Uh, I will do in a sec, Tao. It's struggling at the moment, isn't it, Apple? Really, really struggling. I don't like it on the daily anymore, although I'm in it a lot, but I got in really, really, really low. I mean, to be honest, I'm holding through earnings because I've got long-term positions in Apple. It came from these lows, really. Yeah, that's the fall. That's the move. Didn't quite reach the fifth wave target there. That's why we use trailing stops um, to, to really go for that. But at the moment, Apple just struggling. It really struggling at this level at the moment. Uh, I don't see a trade there right now, uh, especially earnings play for me is not good on this. Uh, I played a few earnings plays recently. One went really bad. The others were, were good and making decent profit. But I certainly wouldn't play the earnings play here. Yeah, the buy they've got a lot of cash, Robert. They've got a lot of cash. So, um, you know, they buy back now, and then when it gets back up to 190, 200, guess what? They'll sell it. That's how they keep getting loads of cash. Very clever. There's no trade there for me at the moment. My second entry into Apple was here. My first one was... Uh, I can't remember now. It's on a different chart, um, but you know, I'm, 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 I've got three entries into Apple, I think now. Um, but yeah, I'm selling profit on all of them. So uh, it looks like it could go for a bit of a, a go at $180 if we get good earnings tomorrow. Yes, that would be nice, Jerry. Very, very nice. HD on the 60 minute now. Let's have a look at HD on the 60 minute Tau. Oh, we need to change the data series. And go back 200 days. Absolutely. Oh, that's looking pretty cool. No false bars on the top, though, so it is slightly lower probability. But I really like that support level right now, Tao. Really like that. Jerry, take note, remind me in the trade room uh, or on the inner circle thing, might set that up tomorrow. I know we're already in it anyway, but that might be a nice little trade to run into the end of the week if the markets can turn bullish again. But that actually bodes well for our longer term trade on HD as well. Um, but I do like that. AAXN Nesta, on what time frame? Daily. Uh, 
this gap up here and this big parabolic straight up move really destroys anything. I think I prefer that wave count there. Yes, coming back from this to these lows. I think that's where we are truly here now. So back in November, this low here is your to isolate your pivot points, okay? Um, because we were pretty much range bound and then we dipped, made the low. The wave one found resistance right at this pivot point here. And then we started to move out and then we had the catalyst, obviously earnings, sent it parabolic. Uh, and then as you can see in the 535 oscillator, we are running out of juice a little bit now and we could see a wave four pullback. And then you've got to look, I mean, I can't predict it. I've not got a crystal ball, but you would say that that sort of level's got to hold. Okay. So the yellow dots at the bottom denote a strong bullish trend. They're on the version three, Trevor, uh, and they're called false breakout dots. Now, when it breaks out, when it breaks out from those dots, and crosses over in the oversold zone here, it wants to go back. You see that bullish signal there, the green arrow? It wants to get back on this third wave move. The entry would have been around, let's just move this line down. So you get the green arrow here, but you sensibly would not enter until you got above these pivots here. So this was the entry here. Obviously the gap up has helped a lot, um, but you go, Falls break out, big, strong, bullish momentum. So the stochastic is it's got false breakouts. Eventually pulls back against it. We're in a third wave move and you've just got to go for it. Sensibly enter, enter there and then it goes back to that full, full on bullish move again, denoted by the um, yellow dots. And then we do have a, a, a deeper pullback, but not in the oversold zone, then returns and now it's coming back down again, hopefully for a wave four. So you just, with these, you've just got to be patient. And what I'm going to be teaching in Chicago is to build your watch list. And one of the really, really cool things with this is once you start trading using this strategy, whether you're on a daily, a weekly, or a six minute time frame on stocks, for example. Uh, you can start trading across the different time frames during that trend once you know how to use it properly. No, the yellow dots mean not doesn't mean no trade, Trevor. It just denotes a very strong bullish momentum. When it pulls back against that momentum, it will want to return like an elastic band. Okay, so yes, you wouldn't trade while the stochastic's in the overbought zone and we're, we're, all the yellow dots are appearing. But when it pulls back against it, it will want to return. So then you, you, you'll go along with this green arrow, okay? Let's just go back to the five minute on, um, on futures. Let me just find that. Uh, The uh, BG, the update indicator with stock assets is coming out to all those people that purchased it um, tomorrow. I'm putting the price up tomorrow as well. So if anybody's not got this indicator suite yet, it's going up to $449 tomorrow. Um, let me just share this screen again. Just wanted to show you how this stochastic trade on ES is going. We got the green bar here and it's made a good move, not bad. Now is obviously we, we're in decision. You'd put a trading stop in there to, um, to protect profits. Uh, we had a good trade yesterday on ES. Um, going down. But again, you've got to look for that oh, YMRC, I see, yes. Let's go, uh, NQ's not good at the moment. 
for obvious reasons. There's a lot of swings there. So let's go on YM. Let's have a look on here. So now what we've got Uh, there, it's going to be part of a, a, a course, Trevor. It's going to be part of a course. And that course is first being delivered in Chicago. And then once it's been delivered in Chicago, I'll record the whole course. It's not just the stochastics. It's the, it's the futures uh, strategy on the five-minute time frame. It's the using multiple time frames um, to get those really sweet uh, um, way five trade moves there's a lot involved in it yeah so I, I won't be recording it live i will be doing it live in chicago uh, but then i will be recording it as a course um so ym what we look for now with ym this is actually having quite a nice pullback at the moment <laughs> Pavlos, it will coming out by email tomorrow. I've had some technical issues today. Uh, you don't really want to hear about them. I've just had some technical issues. Thunderstorm, lightning, power cuts, everything. Uh, it's been pretty horrendous today. So yeah, the stochastic works pretty well in that, um, especially on the five minute time frame, we are looking for those breakouts. And you would look to go above this um, support and resistance level that's put on there by TOS. The yellow line here is yesterday's close. You can see it's still got some way to go up there. Still got some way to go up there. So all I did with this one was isolate the wave count up at these highs here. And to be honest, it was pretty much rangy overnight. Then we got the big move down. I mean, that wasn't really a, fourth, a fifth wave move. So you want to look for, um, in your studies here, you want daily high and low, JT, daily open, and pivots. OK. But only use them on a five minute or a lower time frame because if you go up to 60 minute, it just destroys the chart. You can't see much. Okay, so this is just for um, just for five minute time frames, really. Let's have a look at gold, see what's gold, what gold's doing. See, we're going from overbought to oversold with go gold. This is where this stochastic strategy really comes into its own here. Um, so literally, we're getting these false green moves here. Um, you do get one there. You would have you would have been probably getting out there pretty quick, but then you get the red breakout here, and sensible entry would be go below this one pivot here. And that's your sweet move down. You then put a trading stop on your 6-4 moving average high. Your trading stop gets taken out. You get the green arrow to go high. And you would probably go just above here. And it wasn't really a great move. Made a bit of money. And then the same with this move here. But now we've, we're, we're biased bullish. We get another green arrow. We wouldn't go along until we get above 1308. And it's just following those and accumulating small profits. Yes, you do get a big move every now and then, probably two or three times a week, you get a really sweet fifth wave move um, on futures uh, on, the, on the five minute. Um, but in reality, you're just looking, if, you, if there's no trend, you're just looking for strong um, stochastic type trades there. And these arrows are there to help you. Obviously, there's in entry strategies and things like that. But you just got to look at previous price action, really. Yep. 
Yeah. So if it's on the bottom, it's a strong bearish. So you would you would look now. Listen, Trevor, you see the yellow dots form on the top there. You wouldn't go short. OK, so, yes, that means strong bearish. When it pulls back, you would want to go short with a red arrow. You didn't get one. But then all of a sudden you've got the yellow at the top there it tells you to stay away. OK, because now we're possibly going strong bullish. No, right, Trevor, when it pulls back against the yellow, the false breakout. So when you wrote, this is the oversold here, that's strong bearish. Okay, this is not a good example because this is an example of what, when not to go in, but it's, okay, it's good. Then you pull back against there into the overbought zone. Then you're looking for the signal to go short. But now we've got that false breakout, you ignore the signal because the bias is bullish. OK, let's see if we can find a better example on YM. I think that's easier. I will check C in a minute. Pavlos, let me just, I want to get this nailed. I want to get this nailed. Let's choose the S again. Right. So let's just zoom in a bit there. So we have here on the bottom, we have yellow dots, false breakout, strong bearish momentum. It pulls back against it. Yes, we'd look for the short here. But remember, we weren't going short until we got below this first support level during this yellow dots. OK. It failed. It came back up again. We got another red arrow still against there because it didn't go in the oversold zone there. We go short. It doesn't even come below the 6.4 moving average low. We get another red arrow. Now it's coming back through the 6.4 moving average low. We're going through a daily pivot point. We look to go short or not. OK, even if you did go short, it wouldn't have taken your stop loss out because your stop loss is up here. And then finally, it does break out below this pivot point and go south. So you're looking for a pullback against those false breakouts. And then when it wants to return, going short. Cheers, Mark. Yes, the red arrow is the signal to go short, but you don't just press sell when the red arrow appears. You've got to look at previous support levels. OK, this is why we look here. We got the red arrow. It didn't break this previous support level, so we didn't enter. We got a red arrow here. It didn't even come down below the six four moving average low. That's another false signal. We got one here. A pretty good signal. You could have gone. But again, remember, we're looking to go below this here. So as long as we keep getting those red arrows, we can go short. OK, right, uh, right. Uh, let me go back. Pavlos C, and I know you are Trade Station, so let's bring Trade Station over. Uh, let me share the screen. Trade Station. Yes, Jerry. I've not got my e signal open, so I don't know. I'm not looking at my um, shorts. I don't know how IP has done. I'll have to have a look at that in a minute. So we want to look for C. What time frame, Pavlos? Obviously not the five minute. Until it gets back to me, we'll go daily.
maybe Jerry might get a little bit. Um, Have lost, still there, daily short. You missed the opportunity there. Oh, you're looking for a third wave, aren't you? I don't like it purely because There's no real trend since December. Okay, so when we've got this corrective move here, there's no real trend. And look, no yellow dots, no trend. Makes it very difficult to trade. Could get a double bottom here. You just don't know. Yes, it can. No, can be used on Renko and Range, exactly the same, Nesta, Nestor, sorry. So, Pablo, I don't like it on the daily. I know that's not you want, not what you wanted to hear, um, but it, it has been in a correction this year so far, an ABC correction. And to go short, you've still got support here, okay, around $66. So it's a god awful trade but i do like it i think on the weekly or am i just seeing things mark just be seeing things no i'm not seeing things i like it on the weekly for a long <laughs> sorry i just saw it i saw it yeah, the, I know it's freaky and Jerry and will uh, say, say something about that, but I, I've been doing it that long. I can just see from on the daily time frame, I can see the trend on the weekly or the 60 minutes. Okay. So why is it long on the sick on the, um, on the weekly from these lows, 2016, one, two, three, let's just concentrate on this wave four pullback right now. Obviously, it's got to start moving up, okay? We've had the pullback against the false breakout. The wave fours hit the green zone, 85% probability it's gonna go on and hit $85 there. But we have to be sensible, it could pull back deeper. So we need to measure the 6, five, six, the, six the 535 oscillator. And we need to keep in mind that Right, yeah, I don't use this very often, guys, so just bear with me. I mean, I don't use trade station very often, so price extension lines. Highest point on the wave three is here. We want to go to zero. And then we're just going to come back to, to there. Okay, so that's uh, in play. Okay, Tao, see you tomorrow in the trade room. So now we just have to allow this. This is a weekly time frame, guys. Just look at it every week, see where it closes. Okay. Uh, and then you literally, horizontal line. I wouldn't want to enter until it broke out the six uh, four moving average high. But also, we got this rejection of this high here. So that's my entry. Okay, at this moment in time, my stop loss at the moment in time is below the wave four. So I just put that on. So this is now on my watch list. It's already on there anyway. Um, horizontal line, potential stop loss. So, okay, so it's nowhere near entry. Okay, got a risk reward of about one to 1.6 ish towards the top end of the target there. Um, on a weekly channel, just see if this finds more support around this wave four. Once it starts to move away, then I can start putting the order on. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll have a look at JPM as well. Does that make sense? Um, 
Trevor, why I think it's going to go along on the weekly time frame. Yeah. Okay, it's a shame you can't come to Chicago because I'm going to teach people how to start with the daily and go right to 60, left to, to weekly, and how to, when a stock is trending, just to keep dipping in on weekly, daily, and 60 minute time frames on, the, on those wave four pullbacks. Really, really cool. And it works really well. Um, but it will be part of that online course. So yeah, that's let's have a look at JPM, see if it's doing anything similar on the weekly financial stocks. Ooh, that's got to come a bit deeper yet, hasn't it, Jerry? Yeah, it's got to come deeper for me. And to be honest, I'd probably isolate it up here. I like it on the daily better. Let's change it to daily. Let's change it to daily. Very complex wave four. Bit of a head and shoulders forming there. Just zooming out. I think we've already missed the opportunity uh, with JPM. Yeah, you can see that now, very complex move this, very, very hard to trade. But that's when you go down to the 60 and, and trade trade these moves here. This stochastic move here would have been a wave four on a, pull, on a, on a 60 minute. Um, lots of opportunities, green arrow there again, look, go long, comes, pulls back down against the false bars here. Green arrow, go long, 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 a very good trade. It's a messy inverted cup and handle. <laughs> no, Nestor, the scanner is part of the membership area because I cannot do scanners for every single one that we do, okay? So the scanners is part of the Wave 5 Trade Scanner membership, which now, if I actually share the screen and show you all this time, okay, so this gives you raw data. Can you see the screen with the uh, Wave 5 Trade membership area? Yeah, okay. So I do a video every day, okay? The AVG video was there two days ago, and it'll hit target tomorrow, okay? Um, but what you get in here, it's only $97 a year. It's not going to break the bank, and you'll get a good return on your investment. Uh, you get, do I need to log in? Uh, no, I'm logged in. Members area. So you get potential long fifth wave trades every day, okay? You'll see all these here, back here. Click on the image, download the spreadsheet. This was from today. And you get weekly, daily, and 60-minute time time. Now, this is pretty much raw data. Not everything, you know, is perfect, uh, but it gives you a really good starting point. Um, so this is the weekly, the daily, the 60-minute time frame for longs today. But what I've just also added... With, to help the new strategy stochastics, stochastic trades. So we've got stochastic longs and shorts. Now, to begin with, I'm only doing them on the 15, 30, and 60 minute time frames. So this was today, um, but a bit of much of a trial really, but it did work. Um, download the spreadsheet each day, and it's just one spreadsheet this, uh, for stochastics at the moment, one for shorts and one for longs. 
and these gives you a starting point. So these were on the 15 minute, 30 minute and 60 minute time frames as of the close of last night's session. So these go up during the more European morning. So way before you're ready for, to start trading in the markets, these are there and these are potential stochastic short trades for today on the 15, the 30 and the 60 minute time frame. Okay. How do you join my trade room? Good question. Um, bear with me. Right, 60 minute trades, I don't get in on a Friday, Trevor, okay, because I don't like to carry over the weekend. If I get in on a Monday or a Tuesday, I don't mind carrying it until Friday, okay? I Ideally, two or three days. Yeah, I know, trade room members, I'm just going to pull up the, uh, the sign up page now, um, Nestor to give you the login it's 49 dollars a month it's not um it's not a lot but it's every day and it's pre-market so an hour before the markets we go through trades like this uh so just getting the subscription page now and we do a special breakout strategy as well it's going in the chat box now that's a subscription page um, to the trade room and we do there's a there's a there's a video on there as well that shows you what we do each day um, so you should see the video here we do this special XTL breakout strategy as well on the in the trade room um, which is pretty cool get some good trades off that uh, we do futures trades as well um, so really really cool stuff um, so let me just get rid of that uh, that now does anybody need the link to get the Elliott wave indicator suite has everybody got it because it is going up tomorrow when I send out version 3 No, the $49 a month is just a trade room. Okay, the scanner membership is different. I don't go through all of those scans because it takes forever because there's literally loads. And that is, I can't find it. I'll get you that there. I clearly define my um, my strategies in the trade room. We do breakout trades. We set them up before the session starts, okay? And we look at the swing trade membership as well. So we, obviously, you're a swing trade membership. We go through those trades, and I and I manage them live as well. Uh, for the scanner membership, you sign up. On the actual website and I'll put the link in there uh, okay brilliant it is it's very cool I'm like it I've, I've been using it a month now and I'm very I've been planning it since we launched so <laughs> um, right somebody wanted me to look at TOS JR, TOS, daily. Okay, right. So let me just get another TOS window open and isolate, show you how to isolate the bar counts. 
do apologize. So let me You're welcome, Nestor. Right, let me get a chart going on daily for stocks. Um, JR, yeah? So let me just pull out a stock. IP. Um, what trade at the moment? Let's do WRD. On the daily. Let's go big. Give it a while. I think the data sometimes on TOS goes to Mars and back. What does it mean? Aha, there we go. Oh, I've got to take off. Um, let me just take off these bloody things again. Okay, so isolating on the TOS. It's on the boot camp, but I'll quickly go over it. Just let the data re rejig itself, as it were. Right, so to isolate, there is a window. In the, at the top of the 535 oscillator here, there's a window. It says W5T Alia Wave Oscillator version 2. And then you've got this last window where you've got figures in there. No, I don't miss living in England at all, Trevor. Not at all. Um, so what you're looking for, this moves. Um, those figures, those numbers move as you move the cursor. cursor and that gives you the bar number, okay? So say we wanted to isolate at this low here. That bar number is 291. Can you see that, JR, yeah? So we go to the hourglass. We go to the Elliott Wave version 3. We click on the little cog. And we, where it says start bar, you just want to type in 291. Click OK. Click Apply. Just coming on the way back from Mars now. It's got a lot of calculations to do. And that's isolated from that bar count there. As you can see, that's all corrective. And now on the wave three, and then we're going to wait for a wave four pullback. OK, so have you got a particular stock in mind you wanted me to look at and isolate? Takes a bit of time. If I, I know you've only just got it, um, but it just takes some time to to get used to doing it. Okay, brilliant. Has anybody else got any questions on the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite? I know most of you have already got it anyway, but if there's any visitors here, have you got any questions on any particular platform or how the Indicator Suite works? It's very powerful, um, whether trading futures off a really short time frame or um, in fact stocks off a of daily or Forex or whatever. Anybody got any questions? All is good. So don't forget to look out for those emails tomorrow um, with the new version on. 
Now, for, for a lot of you, it will just be like uh, for Ninja Trader, it comes as a zip file, so it's all version three. Um, but for a lot of you, for the other users, it was just like adding the stochastic to it. Um, so just, you know, be aware. Okay, Nestor, thank you. How is IP doing? I'm sure IP. Ugh, you're joking. Where's my... Uh, I should have put a trading stop on that one, I think. Ah, it's still okay. Still in profit. It'll be all right. Black tape, Jerry. Black tape. Yeah, I'm sure NQ is just coming down now. Uh, sorry, IP even. Trevor. So what to, uh, what stock, what time frame, and what um, platform? Uh, the stock before IP was, uh, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> it's been a long day and I can't remember which stock it was. <laughs> WRD, was it WRD? Right. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. Started at 5.30 a.m. with a migraine this morning, and it's gone downhill since then. I need more than two. Okay, so, whoa, go back. Let me just... Put the hand back on. Right, so this last question then. So we want to go down and isolate at these lows here, September. So we are around about 178. So let's go to 178. So go to the hourglass, Elliott wave. Yours will say version two at the moment, and then we change that to 178. We click OK, we click Apply, and then it calculates. Doesn't change the count, we're still on a long wave three. This was a fifth wave, but it's gone too long, Trevor. So now what that was three, that was four, I traded the fifth. But now that wave's gone longer than this original third wave, it's still a wave three. Does that make sense, Trevor? So we're still waiting for a wave four pullback um, because the, the, the indicator suite recognizes that that wave's now longer, so it's just reassigned it a wave three. YM pullback. Uh, let me have a look, Jerry. Could we trade something live? Could we trade something live? Have a look. Have to reshare. Don't know why it's sticking today. Well, looks a bit deep for me. You've isolated the wave count from the bottom.
Oh, no, you should be coming from these lows. Um, even if you isolate here from here, I don't think you've got to wait for a pullback. Where have you isolated from? Mine's the overnight high. One, two, three, four, five went deep, got the low of the day, and now, you, now you're waiting for a pullback against there to go long. This is TOS. Uh, it is five minute yet. So no pullback at the moment. Looks pretty good. That's quite a strong bounce, isn't it? Quite a strong bounce. I think there's going to be trade. It's getting too late in the session now as well. Obviously, on the on NQ, you are looking for a wave four pullback as well. And I think uh, some of you guys that's not in the trade room, we see this happen a lot. And sometimes you get two set up. The other day, uh, yesterday, I traded NQ and ES at the same time. NQ went a bit flat, got out break even. ES made some profit. Um, so it's just about making sure everything ties up. The stochastic 535 and the wave four pullback. At the moment, we're in strong wave threes on all of them, and we're looking for a pullback into the zone, but not breaking this one pivot on NQ, otherwise, it'll break the bullish trend. So, this still looks weak to me, Jerry, on NQ. If this comes back down below this one pivot here, 6633, 45, around there, that bullish move will be broken. Right, guys, if there's no more questions, I'm going to go in. It's been a long day. Let me stop the recording. Thank you, Trevor, as always.